I've had a lot of fun over the last couple of months putting this motorcycle together with the 164cc big board kit and some other accessories. In this conclusion video of this series, I'm going to walk you through all the different parts we finally put on, give you the part numbers, and I'll put links in the description. I wanted to do one more test on this motorcycle before I button it up. I'm going to put on an AirPod filter from Takagawa. I'm using the stock airbox and stock intake going into a 28 millimeter throttle body. What I'm going to do is replace this air intake with this Takagawa AirPod. That should give me a higher top speed. We're going to test that. Okay, this is starting the first high speed pass. Normal airbox. See how fast we can get to. This is the slight downhill section. All right, we're in fourth gear, full throttle, wide open, the whole way. We've got a sign up here that I'll uh, be able to give you an idea of how fast we're going. You can see we have an indicated 55 right now. That means GPS about 57. Looks like we're uh, rock stable at that 55. Just pass the sign, I'll look down for you. Again, this is downhill into a slight headwind. Very mild. And I'm on the sign right now. Okay, so there you go, 54, 55. So let's call it 57 miles per hour. Now we're gonna head on back the other way. Be slight uphill, but with a slight tailwind. Try to do it when there aren't any cars in front of me so I don't get any uh, drag benefit from that. Let's do it. All right, fourth gear. Wide open throttle. Heading up this hill. See, we have an indicated 56 already. So when we get to at my uh, my designated stop position. down right now, 57, so that's 59 indicated. Here's what that Takagawa air filter pod looks like installed. You just put it directly on the throttle body. This tube here is your crankcase ventilation hose. Connects into the stock one. Now we're testing the Takagawa air pod. This one's going to make me a little bit more nervous. I'm definitely going to be pumping a lot more uh, air into the engine. To make sure that air fuel ratio looks good. about two, two and a half miles per hour at that speed due to a uh, 15 tooth front sprocket that I put on and slightly taller tires. Go back the other way here. Again, I'll wait for uh, a break between the cars so I'm not getting any sort of benefit from the cars. Look like the air fuel ratio was behaving itself pretty well. Again, not having tested this on the freeway for any length of time. I'm gonna be a little bit cautious just to make sure that we don't uh, we don't screw anything up here. All right, now we can go. Hopefully, I don't get wind from this car. Our 
hotter into this uh, corner, that's for sure. So yeah, makes a difference. So I wanted to throw on that Takagawa air filter pod just to show you the potential of this motorcycle. I'm not personally going to recommend it at this point in time since I don't have an oil cooler, but that's certainly an option. The air fuel ratio really looked good at about 13.1 to, to 1, and if you had an oil cooler, you could probably handle the heat that that's going to generate. As of right now, we'll stick with the stock air box, reduce our speed a little bit, but also reduce the heat until that oil cooler comes in. Then I'm going to test both the 190cc fuel injector that I currently have on the bike with the air pod, and then also the 170 cc per minute fuel injector with the stock air box. We had three main theories on why the last piston and cylinder failed. That was the Yumanashi 164 cc. Number one is insufficient oil cooling. Number two was fuel mapping was insufficient at certain RPMs. In other words, we were running too lean. And the third was that we were running the engine at too high of a piston speed or RPM. And we've addressed all three of these in the latest build. The green rows are parts that were already on the motorcycle. The blue represents new parts that I added since the last testing period. And what we've done is we've built a 164cc light bore kit from Kitako instead of from Yumanashi. That allows us to later on have an oil cooler. In addition, we put a mini three air fuel ratio meter just so we can monitor where we are. Next, we put a super oil pump kit. Again, that'll be great for when we have an oil cooler later on. We put in a much bigger fuel injector at 190 cc uh, per minute. In addition, we put in this EFI device or an electronic fuel injection enhancer device from Eagle Research. We also put on a 15 tooth front sprocket to slow those RPMs down or reduce those RPMs at higher speeds. We also added a drain bolt with a magnet, just kind of an extra there, just trying to get some of that uh, steel particles out of the oil. And finally, we had to use some cover gaskets in that. Now, no good thing comes without some pain and suffering. And in this particular case, there's quite a bit of high cost here. So you're talking about $1,200 all in in order to buy all those components in order for the motorcycle to be both reliable and much faster. My target was 55 miles an hour constant up and down hills and into some headwinds. We've achieved that. I did show the testing with that air filter pod. Uh, that's something that we might throw on later on once we have an oil cooler. Um, also in the previous video where we were talking about fuel injectors, we showed that 170 cc will also increase your top speed again, but at the cost of temperature and heat that I'm not able to dissipate without an oil cooler. So overall, very pleased with the build. We're going to lock this in. We'll be running this through most of the summer until that oil cooler comes in, at which point we'll do a little bit further modification. But as far as the 164 cc build series, I'm considering that complete at this time. That's about all the testing and modification this little bike can handle. Time to put it all back together and put the plastic work back on. If you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe. See you on the next video.